everybody, Dave Clark, aka The Patterns Guy. Welcome to another Chalk Talk. It's been a while since we've done one of these things. Been real busy all this summer, like I've been telling you in all the other videos. Uh, another thing I got going to, uh, you know, I, I gotta think of content all the time, okay? So like I said, if you guys got suggestions, things you want to hear, you know, put them in the comment section. We'll try to get to them as quick as we can, you know, and get some uh, questions answered, okay? So I also do, uh, I had mentioned once before, I get on a little blog site or whatever it's called, uh, Chasky Home Machining. I've, I, I've been a member of that for, I don't know, 10, 12 years or something like that. But I, I rarely get on it and I, I haven't for a while either. Um, I just, I suck at typing and I can't spell for, you know what, so. Uh, I, it just, you know, it says I, I just don't have time a lot of times. But here and there, I'll, I'll hop on there and see what's going on. They do have a section in there. Um, they've got, like, uh, steam trains, steam engines, uh, welding, gunsmithing, uh, CNC machine. It, it, it's a pretty diverse site. They got a lot of neat content. They got some really smart guys on there, too, uh, you know, contributing that. So anyhow, they do have a foundry section. So I'll check in on Nate every once in a while. Like I said, I want to start helping guys get going in the foundry business and in the pattern business. Because like I said, it's, uh, you know, I think Forbes magazine said there's only like 200 pattern makers left in this country, you know. So I want to keep it going then. So one of the uh, contributors there, um, Ada Randick, he asked in the casting section, he wants to make a wheel, train wheel. So it's like 14.9 inches, I guess, in diameter in it. So he asked how to lay it out um, for match play. Okay, so one of the other contributors I saw today, I checked up to see how things were going on it. Um, one of the other contributors made a real important point, and one of the most important things Adirondack needs to do is you got to find out what foundry you're going to take this to, and then you're going to ask them how they want the pattern equipment made, okay? So there are several different ways. I actually made this train wheel here. This one actually happens to be 22 inches, okay? So one of the determining factors with this was the customer for this only wanted four, okay? So like I've been saying too, a lot of foundries don't want to do onesies, twosies, four, or whatever they want things mounted gated because it at you know they just want to dump sand into a mold make their mold and pour the iron or bronze or whatever and be done they don't want to dick around with having to cut gating in there a lot of guys don't even know how to do it anymore and that so you know they want everything done this particular customer he does a lot of steel and he can pour up to i believe it's six ton he invited me down there to film one of these days, so hopefully Joe and I, before the summer's out, Joe and I are going to try to get up there to uh, film them, how they make their molds. They make hard sand molds there, and then they pour steel, steel and iron there. And like I said, they do it in about six ton batches and that. So anyhow, I'll try to get up there with these. Okay, so get back to uh, Adirondacks thing here. Um, we were, they only wanted four of these, okay? So this uh, steel foundry, they were willing to do it loose. Okay, so this, this is loose, it's a loose pattern. And uh, basically what I had to do though was, I just had this out a minute ago. <laughs> it stuck. So uh, I had that out and made sure. Okay, here's the back side or the reverse side or whatever, and it, it's very similar to what Adirondack is doing, okay? So what I had to do here was, and maybe we can chalk talk this, okay? So I'm not going to do this too detailed, okay? Here's the wheel, okay? So basically what we needed to do was we had to come up with a part of it. Okay, so he wanted to do this, the steel firing wanted to do this in a coat, all right? So instead of making this my part and flipping it upside down, basically, 
you know, we could have parted it this way. All right, it would have kind of been easier. He wanted it in a coat, so that's why we had to, you know, we made what was called a parting block, okay? And the parting block came down here like that, okay? So we made this parting block, and then what he's going to do, he's going to put his flask around here, right? All right, there's his board. He's going to put that down on there. He's going to fill that full of sand. Well, here, you know, he's going to be able to take that mold off, okay? There's draft and all that, right? Then what he'll do, he'll take this parting block out of the mold, okay? And then I just put the sense gate get stuck again, but it didn't go. So then what he's going to end up with this, and then he's going to have parting down here, okay, which this would be up here, right? All right, so he'll have that. So, you know, if they did it the drag-wise, okay, so he'll actually, he's here. All right, so he'll be able to take the parting block up and ram that side there, okay? So what Adirondack's going to have to do is you have to go to, like I said, this guy was willing to do it loose because they do it in hard sand. So depending on the quantity he wants, you know, those wheels, you know, if he's just doing four of them, you know, you might find a foundry that's willing to do them loose. All right, so if he needs them mounted, though, the other thing you're going to have a, an issue with, too, is 14.9 inches. That's, uh, that's pretty big. This one's 22. It's going to be smaller than that. So that's, that's getting big for, for a match plate, okay? So what you might have to do is uh, go into what's called cope and drag boards, all right? And that'll be separate. So you would have, like this would say would be my drag here, okay? This whole piece would be on a board. And then on the opposite side, this would be your parting, this surface here. And the board would continue out from here. And then you got to put this in either a copra drag or, or whatever they want to, however they want to mold that, okay? <laughs> so the way I would go about doing this project, okay, I would go ahead, you know, you got to find out where you're taking it, what foundry you're going to take it, find out how they want it, if they want it, if they could do it loose here, and you could give them a parting block, or if you're getting high production, they're willing to put it on a match plate, you got to make a match plate or cope and drag boards, okay? So, in order to make either cope and drag boards or um, just a match plate, okay, you're still, what I would do, I would still make the pattern first, all right? So, I'd start out making your master pattern, okay? And then what I would do is, I, you'd have to make this, uh, you still have to make a parting block, okay? Because what you're going to do from here, all right, you're going to end up making a mold off of this. You're going to put a couple boards around here. Now, there's a couple different ways that, you know, I would go about doing this. Um, if you watch some of my uh, other videos, I use a product called Repro 83. It's a 50-50 plastic. You know, you could go ahead and pour that. That would be horrifically expensive. You probably use two or three units pouring plastics on this. Um, for backyard guys and things like that, um, you can find online, you can find guys that sell uh, fiberglass in that. So me personally too, if this customer did want to put this on cope and drag boards or onto a match plate, that's probably the route I would have done. I would get some fiberglass resin and some fiberglass fiberglass the mold up and then you you know you do the same thing you take it out take your parting block out right mold that half up let's do this here so then what you do we'll make a uh, match plate here and, and this is it's going to be i'll draw a match plate on here okay and then it, it's going to be kind of a almost the same thing doing the cope and drag board. It's just going to be on separate boards, okay? So let's start out with, uh, let's 
start out with our match plate. Like I said, I should just get one of these boards and put a permanent match plate on there, I think. You know, that way you don't have to throw out and throw on 101,000 match plates out there. Okay, so like I said, what I would do, and, and, and like I said, you're going to have to ask the foundry. Me personally, I would try to mount it this way, all right, on the on to either a match plate or a cup and drag board. Okay, so but we're we're just doing a match plate, okay? So here we got this wheel pattern, okay, like this, and then you know the inside. I don't want to make this too detailed. You know, we're just going to do this, okay? So, this would be either my cope or drag half, whatever the foundry wants, okay? So, now on the other side, say this was my cope, what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to make the drag. Well, this is actually going to be, this will look exactly like this on the opposite side, okay? So, basically, what that'll do is that'll end up. You have to cut a hole in your board, and that'll end up, you know, going in here. Okay. All right. So you'll have that indentation there. Okay. So like I said, when you what you're going to have to do is when you make this make the pattern, okay, then you know you're going to put a put a frame around this and then fill this full of fiberglass, right? And then you're going to do, without this board being in there, you're going to do the same thing and get this side. Do that fiberglass too. Okay, now, with that being said, what you've got to do from there is you got to make, you got to drill some pins through here. Okay, so let's get rid of these. Where to put my cloth here? All right, let's get rid of these sides here. All right, so you're gonna put pins on, and then what this will look like too. You'll have that, okay? And then this is this is gonna be one mold, and then well, I erase the sides, but okay, we got the top mold, okay? And then we'll pin this. Is, we'll put that on there, okay? So here's your mold. All right, and then we're going to pin them together, make sure that they're not moving. I, I wouldn't put, usually I just do two pins, okay, do them as big of a pin as you can, like, you know, very least I do something this big, like half inch pin, you know, half inch, five, eight, three quarter, depending on what kind of machinery you have to do them, okay? And then what you do is you put one half of your mold onto your match plate, Okay, and then actually this will go all the way through on one piece of the mold. All right, let's see that goes all the way through. All right, so then what you do is you, you put your pins, you drill your hole, the way your holes are going, your locating holes are going through your match plate. Okay, so then what you do from there is this stuff won't be up here. All right, and then you'll have, you know, say your mold is in here. Then what you do is, this is where I go ahead and use the repro because it's it's hazy hazy, and uh, you mix it hazy hazy it's like runny milkshake consistency. You pour that in there, okay, and then that'll make your copper drag half whatever. I, I do that in my drag half, uh, cope half. Uh, that's why I do it. Then what you do after that hardens, then you put the other half on and then pour your other half, okay? So that'll give you your match plate, okay? Now, if you have to do cope and drag board, okay, if they want you to do cope and drag board, um, there, there's a couple different ways with that too, okay? Um, you know, if they want to mount it, if they want to mount it and get it, okay? Um, you know, they basically want, you're going to either have, we're going to do them top and bottom, okay, because I, I just don't have enough room, okay. So, 
So the one, one part's going to be here, okay, and then your other half, okay, it's going to be an indent, right? We're just going to do this real simple, okay? So that's your other half. Okay, th this will be your board, all right? So that's what your cope and drag boards will look like. You know, there's your drag half, that'd be your cope half, or vice versa, like I said, depending on what they want to do in the foundry, okay? So what you got to do is, with these, <coughs> I usually make my cope and drag boards out of plywood, one inch plywood, it's kind of hard to find one inch plywood. I know Freeman Manufacturing has it, if I can remember to tell my editor guy, Joe, to uh, put the uh, links to a couple places on here for you. Um, so what you have to do is you would say this is plywood here, this is plywood here, right? So you book them together and then you drill that locator hole so that they're on two sheets of plywood, okay, or two pieces of plywood. All right, so then what you do is you pin your one mold on, pour that on that half, and then pin the other mold on your other board and have that. The most important part about that though, okay, so this is the mold side, this is the mold side, all right? So the most important thing, when you're drilling your pin holes, okay, you gotta kinda book them together bottom side to bottom side to drill your pin holes, okay? Because if you do them on top of each other, top side up, top side up, and move them over, your pins are gonna be backwards, okay? So it's gotta, you gotta have the boards like they would be laying out, okay? And then you gotta book them together, okay? And then flip them up and drill your holes for your locations, okay? And then you, you book it back up. Always, always, you know, like I do, I'll do, you know, put a put an X up here, put an X down here, or whatever, or the, the biggest thing, what I do, I always do this, okay? Put a P, L, that's parting line, okay? So that's what I'll do, I'll put a P, L on this underside of the board and a P, L, on the other side of that board, make sure those two PLs are together, okay? And then when you flip them up, the parting line should be on your bench, all right? So I hope that explains um, a couple things. You know, okay guys, we had a little glitch there, ran out of batteries. Okay, I had a feeling I was gonna have that. I'm not exactly sure where I was at. So what we'll do is, uh, like I said, just um, try to keep this thing going so if you guys uh, would, I'd appreciate it if you uh, subscribe for me, push the like button if you can. Um, if there's anything that you guys want to learn like this, just give me a shout out and we'll uh, try to get a little segment on, try to explain some things for you. And if I fully don't explain it, you have more questions, I have no problems doing another video with it to me. It's, it's easier to show people things rather than just sit there and type. And, and for me to type a paragraph, that's like an hour or so. Anyhow, I'd probably pre appreciate it, excuse me, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe for me. Push the like button for everybody that has already. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, with that, everybody have a good one out there and stay safe.